Welcome again to another episode of the Comfy UI Huniwan AI Video Generation. Today we have an exciting episode since uh, the image to video Huniwan model just got released. This is the official Huniwan model, right? So uh, it's not uh, something that we work around. It's really the one where it's officially supported by Huniwan there. So we'll see how it works out. Uh, I'm going to be sharing again my one ultimate workflow and how I've updated the single group there to match the current new model. So that whole workflow, we keep exactly the same, but we change only one group so that it matches the, uh, the new model. For all the details of how the workflow is used, do watch the previous episode. It has all the details there. But today, we will only cover the updated group. Cool. That being said, let's jump in into the image to video Hunyon model. So make sure that you update the config UI. And with the update, you should have that, uh, that new UI where you can uh, bypass and there's a bunch of other options there. You can see here the workflow is exactly the same as before, but only for the number four, which is the uh, image to video loop. That's the one that we're editing that we're changing. It's not this the, the Hunyuan model anymore. It's the image to video Hunyuan model. So it's still Hunyuan, obviously, but it's the image to video model. So it's a different model. Knowing that's a different model, well, the LoRa, they're, they're not going to work anymore. Uh, obviously, the leap uh, motion, a uh, leap fusion model is not going to be used anymore. But instead, we're going to be using the Hunyuan image to video LoRa. So it's not even the Hunyuan LoRa we're going to be using. It's the image to video LoRa. So it's a yet another set of LoRa that we're going to be using for the image to video model. But again, it makes sense because whenever you have a different model, uh, chances are it's been trained in a different way. Hence the LoRa, the, the extra information needs to be, to be matching it. Now, you can see all the details here of my full workflow. Um, it's n nothing really changed there. So that's why it's really what I wanted for, which was the a workflow that we can reuse and just update along the way, depending on what, what got updated. So this is the section where we updated uh, a few changes there, and we're going to go through it so that we can see uh, what are the different uh, details of how to use it. The final merge is exactly the same. Now here in the step number two, I did a small change. It's a very small change, but uh, just for, for awareness there, I changed how the, uh, the flow shift calculation is done, but it's a very small change. I also changed the uh, low, uh, low to high quality. Uh, I gave all the scale up all the way to 70. Because 30, even though most of the cases 30 is good enough, it's fun to sometime when you want all those extra details to come out to have that extra steps being generated. Now on this side, which is the image to video loop, we're now with the official model. You can see all the, the same concept is being kept. I mean, the same workflow is is there basically but a few nodes were updated which again this was to to match the new model now the new model is there right there right the image to video model um because it's a new model i was able to also update with the the uh, loader of g guf there so for those who has less memory we can now load with the GGUF model, which has different quantization. So use the quantization that is matching your memory availability for the VRAM. Now the LoRa was there on the top. And also we have the, the different guiders there, the different processing nodes. I removed the Tcash node. I tried to use with the Tcash, but it didn't work well. The, the, 
the animation was not looking good at all. So that was removed. In the new workflow that you download, it won't be there anymore. The input was uh, was pretty much the same there, except for the the low to high quality. Uh, it's going to be a, a much bigger scale like the previous one. I remove all the calculation also here. The flu uh, the the flow shifter. It's a uh, it's something to be still be experimented with. So that's why I remove all those calculation there. It's just a, a box for the flow shift. Now with that. You should be able to run the whole thing just like before. I mean, um, if you look at the uh, Tencent website there, I mean, it's looking pretty good. I mean, if you look the reference image and the generated video, it looks very nice. Uh, different style, uh, different uh, animation type. They're all looking pretty nice. And we're going to be generating a few to see it together now. We can see here there is more update to be coming, but uh, right now it's looking uh, very interesting there. And this is just their, their first release. I know there's going to be more with higher resolution coming forward. Okay, let's get into execution time now. So to execute this, this workflow, let's try a, diff a few different things. So first thing, let's uh, zoom in into this... Uh, this workflow where we do the image to video group. But just before that, let's go into the prompt generation from image. We want to generate the, the prompt there from the image so that we have a bit more information about the image itself. So we have the image loaded right there. Don't forget to switch, right? To switch from, is it the source from image or the source from a video? So we have to be switching accordingly. Let's uh, generate that to see what the Florence model sees when it looks at the, at the image. It will give us all the detail we need to be able to use as a prompt. There we go. We have the prompt generated. Let's copy that. And let's use that prompt in the image generation for, for the image to video group. Let's enable that. But just, just to be clear, I mean, we could click on those arrow to jump directly into that group. I usually drag simply because as I do my video, it's more obvious where I'm going to. If I jump left and right, it's gonna be not easy to follow. So I'm dragging around. So this is the prompt for the image to video. I just pasted it and I'm reviewing the prompt there because we want to be you know, as, as small slash concise as possible, right? So I'm removing anything that is not necessary, it's not important for me. And just uh, keeping the, the very uh, minimum there and adding a, a bit of action so that we can have a image to video being generated. So that's done. Let's go to the bottom part. I have the resolution set to a pretty good one. I make sure that the source is correct also with the switch there. I'm switching to make sure that it's switched to the load image and not load video. And let's, uh, let's generate this. Let's do a quick fast forward so that we can see the result. There you go, there's the result. So we can see the hand into the hair, maybe a bit too much into the, the face. So it's not exactly what I wanted the character to do. This is where, you know, detailing what the action is become important. But let's uh, give it a try. You can see the prompt. Um, I'm removing all the details of the problem and just generating with just the action so that we can see the difference between a very generic prompt versus a detailed prompt. 
to see how the first step, which is to generate the, the detail prompt, is important or not. And I can assure you it is. So let's see the result. So there's a the result. Obviously, the, the output is, is different, but look at the details. I mean, the details is, is all gone. I mean, it's trying to figure out what to generate, but because there's no detail, then it, it doesn't know exactly what to generate, right? So it's trying to keep it consistent, but there's no detail anymore. The detail is, is gone. So that's why it's important to, to have a, a good description in the prompt there to detail what you want to see. Now, let's uh, try another image. Uh, it's a, a square image. I'm going to change the resolution so that it's a square resolution. I'm going to change the seed just to make it a bit different. Probably not needed. And uh, let's, uh, let's try it with a flow shift of uh, 17. Oh, and let's make sure that we put a, a, a detail prompt again, right? So let's go back to the first group and let's generate a detail prompt from that image that we want to generate because we know it's important now that we have a detail prompt. If not, we're just going to be losing a lot of, of detail, right? As it, it goes to image to, uh, to video, the detail will be lost there. So let's make sure the detail is, remains. So there we go. We have the prompt, the description of the image. Copy paste that, enable the group. And pasting the prompt. Let's uh, do a bit of cleaning there, just a quick cleanup of the prompt so that we have something concise. There we go. Adding a few action, she winks and smile. And so let's generate this. Currently the uh, flow shift is at 17 value. So we can see the, the result of a 17 value. Let's uh, try it again. It's looking good. The results are looking good, but let's try it again to see what happens when we do a flow shift of a smaller value to try to understand how, how the flow shift works. So right here without changing anything, nothing else has changed except for the flow shift value, which I'm going to reduce to 10. Uh, from the description there, it says to keep it between uh, 10 to 17. Um, but again, uh, depending on what you're trying to do, you can always change it and see the result. So here, here's the result so that we can see it more clearly. Flow shift 5, 10, and 17, right? So just to see there, I mean, we can see flow shift 5, she's not even smiling, right? Even though we asked for it. So shift 10 and 17, she's smiling. So it, it kind of uh, enable the, the action or the changes to happen. So if you want a lot of activities, a lot of uh, changing element, then you increase the flow shift. If not, you reduce it. That seems to be the case, but it's a much more complicated uh, uh, parameter than that. I mean, it's just a small update, but it came out right after I released the full one workflow there that I I created just a few days ago. So really, I mean, it came right out, but it does touch the point where I'm going to be using that full ultimate workflow moving forward. I'll just be updating different nodes depending on the changes that's happening there. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope uh, you find it interesting and you learn a few things today. With the new updated workflow, we can finally do more of the image to video generation and have amazing video of AI generated with Hunyan model there. Thank you very much and have a nice day.